Okay. Um, called this uh, in order to have just a general discussion of the Occupy movement overall, its importance and its impact and everything. Not focus on one Occupy movement, but more the concept, what uh, is trying to be accomplished, what, how do we look at it, how do individuals look at it, things like that. So what we're going to do is, like, I'm just doing this little intro, and then Anne's going to talk a bit about her visits to the various Occupy movements, because she's visited, what, more than 20 now? 20. Wow. Yeah. And so she has sort of a, you know, picture of what's happening in different areas, some of the differences and things like that. Again, that can't be taken as any sort of definitive thing because each one of them is so different and, you know, you'll be at something one day and then the next day it's going to be quite different. And because of the very nature of the Occupy movements, they're a very changeable, um, you know, they're a very changeable entity. So, you know, I want this just to be a general discussion. Uh, after my little intro, then Anne will speak. Then I'm going to ask that all cameras, cell phones, all of that be turned off so that people ha feel the freedom to just talk among ourselves. Liz will be using um, a piece of ours just now for her show on Alelo this week. If people want to join her on her show to talk about Occupy, you know, that's possible too. She'll be pulling some uh, things off of YouTube and things like that to show as well. So next month's uh, monthly show, uh, the sh weekly show on Voice of Resistance will also be on the Occupy movement, um, and hopefully there are a lot more of them on the, on that will be happening on Alelo and elsewhere. But you know, mainly I'm going to try to moderate the um, you know the Q and As, and we don't have a Q and A of an expert to talk on anything, but I'll try to moderate it so that it stays generally within the purview of the Occupy movement and doesn't sort of get down into trashing people or whatever like that uh, because there's just too freaking much of that uh, going on too much and, and I think we need to talk about the big issues involved. Um, people may have seen that there's a call for mass action uh, that's gone out from New York City and it begins, uh, this past several months have witnessed something very different in the U.S. People from many different walks of life came together to occupy public space in 1,000 cities in the United States. They stood up to vicious police violence, they broke through the confines of protest as usual, and in the middle of all that, they built community. Even in the face of media attempts to ridicule, distort, and demonize these protests, their basic message began to get through. People throughout the U.S. and even the world took notice of and took heart from these brave and creative protesters. And then it, got, and then it gets into it a bit more and then the actual attacks on the police, especially on the protest movement. Uh, it it um, doesn't end with uh, but I'm just going to go more toward the end. To put the matter bluntly but truly, the state planned and unleashed naked and systematic violence and repression against people attempting to exercise rights that are supposed to be legally guaranteed. This response by those who wield power in this society is utterly shameful from a moral standpoint and thoroughly illegitimate from a legal and political one. Now this movement faces a true crossroads. Will it be dispersed, driven into the margins, or co-opted, or will it come back even stronger? This question now poses itself extremely sharply. One thing is clear already. If this illegitimate wave of repression is allowed to stand, if the powers that be succeed in suppressing or marginalizing this new movement, if people are once again penned in both literally and symbolically, things will be much worse. This suppression must be massively opposed and defeated. This is a call for massive demonstrations soon, carried out in public spaces where they can have maximum impact and exposure and where the authorities cannot pen in, suppress, and otherwise attempt to marginalize these demonstrations. Thousands and thousands of people in the street is what it's called for. That's the essence of it. It's longer than that. And it's been signed by 
a large number of people, many prominent folks, including Anne, <laughs> being one of the first signatories, I think. Uh, and it emanated out of New York. New York is going to have a demonstration on the 28th, and organizations across the U.S. are planning solidarity events. These events would speak specifically to the police repression against the Occupy movement, which uh, I believe uh, is the thing that most seriously has to be addressed, in spite of all of the other debates going on in the movement and, you know, the things like Chris Hedges and all of this stuff coming up. That cannot be allowed to divert from which it, what is essentially the real attack on the movement, and that's from the, uh, the state and its repressive forces. So I think when we get into our discussion too, uh, maybe at some point we can talk about ideas for here. I think we should build some um, massive kind of demonstration, as massive as we can hope for in Honolulu. Uh, <laughs> uh, even if it's just sign holding down at the Thomas Square site, but something that brings a lot more people in for a couple of hours to stand with the movement here. Because the people here have bravely been standing up against the police. They have uh, undergone all kind of criticism for the community on, on basically what are secondary you know, weaknesses possibly. But they've stood strong and that should be an inspiration to us in Hawaii because God knows it's a small number of people uh, that's ever willing to do that in Hawaii, and it's been a breath of fresh air that there is a movement that's related to uh, a movement against massive uh, injustice, inequality in the U.S. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Bob Avakian, who's the chairman of the Revolutionary Communist Party, of which I'm a supporter, uh, put out a statement which said, in the main, and up to this point at least, the overwhelming aspect of these Occupy protests has been their very positive thrust in mobilizing people to stand up against injustice and inequality and the domination of economic, social, and political life and international relations by a super-rich elite class whose interests are in opposition to those of the great majority of people and in contributing in significant ways to an atmosphere in which people are raising and wrangling with big questions about the state of society and the world and whether and how something much better can be brought into being. It will be a very good thing if these protests continue to spread and further develop with this basic thrust and this positive impact. And uh, then gets into it and there's been ongoing analysis of the movement in Revolution newspaper since then Anybody can sign up for a free subscription and get the latest accounts of what's been happening in Oakland and the latest attacks there. A uh, very good article this week, which is out on the table for you to take if you uh, want a copy, along with a couple of earlier issues. So, um, you know, with that as a sort of intro, and then I would like to have, have uh, Anne talk and then turn off all of the devices and just get into a freewheeling discussion because there's a tremendous amount going on around the Occupy movement now and I think this should be a place where people can raise what they feel are criticisms or suggestions or whatever and I certainly don't want that out there on TV for everybody to pick up. So uh, thanks and here's Anne. <laughs> Thank you, Carolyn.